HDTV is brought to you by Harley Davidson Financial Services, Northside Harley Davidson and the Fraser Harley Davidson Group, and the Bayford Group, celebrating 100 years, along with Harley Davidson Australia. Welcome to Harley Davidson TV. Now, the 2018 Softail launch has happened. They've launched eight brand new Softails, but the diner is no more. Now, we've ridden the Softails, they're in the shops, they're fantastic, but a lot of people are unhappy. I saw a guy with a cap, make diners great again. Well, guess what? This is a diner. This is a 2006 diner lowrider. When I bought it, I wanted something different. So I'd heard about McCulley Customs. I thought I'm gonna take my bike to see the boys. And uh, I dropped in there, left it with them. This is what it ended up like. And this is how it all happened. Gotta get on the road. Gotta get on the gas. Got that white line fever. I really want to pass. Gotta stay on the road. That feels like home. While sitting on my road. I'm never My name's Matt McCulley, also known as Gas. Hey, if you're not going to work, f My brother Danny is also known as the German. I don't give a, a shit if the swing arm comes back a day before it's finished. I can't see what I'm saying. We are McCulley Customs. Oh, you're going to stand around laughing. Tell them I've had enough of these f***ers. Come here before I send them both over this f***ing battery at the front. It's only been a couple of years since Matt and Danny started their business on the outskirts of Melbourne. We fabricate custom motorcycles from ground up, or if a customer brings in a bike and they want a few little modifications, or a, from mild to wild, we can give you whatever you like. The boys have been making many parts for custom bike shops in Australia for a long time now, and have broken into the market themselves. Always had an interest in bikes and always wanted to build my own bike. They specialise in metal design and engineering, with younger brother Danny riding the bike up front. From a young age, all I did was draw things, build things, try and design new things. That's all I've done my whole life. Like any good ride, someone has to sit down the back and keep everyone moving. When we first take on a job, Danny, of course, being who he is, just would like to get in, rip the bike apart and, and, and go mad. It's my job to pull the reins on, say, hang on, we've got a process to work to. With their custom parts in demand all over the world, these boys have less time for full bike builds. However, one they have built from the ground up is this little beauty, built for Jake King, the Aussie rules footballer. It's lucky he's got a good set of arms. He'll need them to ride this McCulley Custom. One of my hobbies that I love doing is riding motorbikes and 18 months ago got my first brain buster and wanted to build a Harley and yeah that was the beginning. And as we started to go along the, the bike ended up looking better and better and the boys started throwing a few more ideas up and ended up with a bit of a wow factor in the end and yeah I couldn't be any more happier. Now establishing themselves in the custom world the McCulley's game plan is the weekend Harley rider. And though Dundo's not your typical weekender, he fits the bill. Today we're expecting a, a guy to call in on his 06 low rider. He's actually going to Sturgis for about a month, which is the biggest Harley party um, in the world. I think there's around 500,000 Harleys that, that gather there every year. So the turnaround on this bike will be reasonably speedy. I bought a 2006 Dyna low rider. I rode it home and then pulled it to bits, pulled everything off it. I took the bars off, I bought new bars, I got new pipes, I had it chromed, I had this rear swing arm chromed, then I had a 200 put on the back end. And then I looked around and everybody else has done exactly the same thing with their Harleys. And I'm riding around thinking, I want something different. I heard about McCulley Brothers and did a bit of research and uh, I thought, I'm gonna give these guys a go. What can we do for you? Dying a low rider. He knows what he wants to keep on the bike, what he wants to change. That's more than likely a 17 that's a, there that, now. That's a 17, that's down to change from 17 soft tail. Yep. So I want something different and I want, you know, what I've heard is that you bikes can make it. Customising is making your bike suit you, whatever that might be. It could be tearing it down and making it 
into a more track ready bike. Or customising can be changing every part on the bike for another part completely, just because you can. The art of a good custom bike, in my opinion, is something that looks great, but can still be ridden as well as, if not better than, it originally was. Gave the guys a deadline, I gave them a list of the things that I wanted done, and left it in their hands. I'm allowed two months to have this, if you can do it in two months. Get it knocked over. You, you might be able to get it. I leave now. Dundo's off to Sturgis, something he and his mates organise every two years. Each time they pick a different start point. This year they rode six days solid from Seattle through Montana to Sturgis in South Dakota. Sturgis is the grand final of the Harley World. It's the big deal, the big event. In the middle of August, there is 500,000 people there with about the same number of bikes. Where are they from? Australia. Hey, baby, down under. Right on, man. Welcome to Sturgis, man. That's awesome. No matter how many times you've been to Sturgis, it's still mind-blowing to see so many Harleys in one spot. Every major manufacturer of aftermarket parts, plus Harley themselves, everybody's there, because everybody knows that's the place to go. Back in Australia, the McCulley's start work on Project Diner. Me and Matt went over it, we had a good look at it, and I thought, all right, what can we do with this? It's, it's a Diner-style bike. Not that many people do dramatic things to these bikes. They pretty much, you know, they'll bling them up, paint job, bit of parts here and there. But seeing it, I thought, we've got to do something different. Uh, rear wheel, he wants to keep it for 200. Keep it 200. The guard. Yeah. I know he wants to be able to carry his wife. He wants it short, but still wants to be able to carry his missus. What about if we machine him up a, a billet swing arm, something nice? Just maybe recess the number plate and the lights in the back of the guard. We've got to make this thing look tough. We went through a few concepts. Um, started sketching. Probably had sort of three different sketches sort of going, and uh, then we sort of finalised on one, put some finishing touches on it, and thought, yeah, all right, now that is a concept. Yeah, he's going to love that. With the design in good shape, after yeah. the break, it's onto the wheels. It might be a little bit extreme. McCulley Customs are taking Dundo's 2006 Dyna Lowrider from mild to wild. However, Dundo's with a bunch of mates at Sturgis in the USA. Meanwhile, back in Australia, his bike is in for big changes. It's a funny feeling to leave your bike with someone who you don't really know. I've met Danny and, and Matt and had a gut feeling that they were good at what they do, but you know, when you've got a lot of time to think about it and you sit there and think, I wonder what they're doing. The overall shape and stuff of the bike is what we're after. Once we had decided on that, we, we emailed it off to Steve. G'day Steve, how you going? Good mate, good. I um, got your email. Yeah, what do you think? You're happy enough with that? We can get it rolling straight away. So. If you can get, to, get it on that, mate, I'll be stoked. He, he's raring to go. He's giving us the, the thumbs up. Go see it, boys. Sturgis is great, but the riding is fantastic. So we, we did a lot of riding around America, and every time I was riding, I was thinking, I wonder what my bike is going to look like. When I met Danny and Matt, I had a gut feeling they were OK. They told me they had another brother but I haven't met Kenny yet. Now if you complain, you'll never get another one. Can... Try and get me on the coffees in the broom. I don't know if you've seen, Matt's left me, uh, he's, he's made me a signature series broom. White one? White one. I mean, Dan take the piss out of him. I mean, he, he probably takes the heart sometimes, but it's all in jest. But uh, he means well. Hey Matt, you want a bun? You wanted a coffee? Yeah. Thank you, sure? Bye. Right. Australian espresso, and we give it a bit of an Italian flavour. One for you. One for you. Okay. 
Kenny's got the day off to a kickstart. Now it's time to get the wheels rolling. Marnie. Yeah. It's Matt from McCully Customs. How are you going? Good, Matt. Uh, we're just wondering if you're available for five minutes if we pop up and sort out some wheels and sproters with you. Yeah, we have stay. Yep. I'd already been in touch before I left for Sturgis with Marnie from Dragway about getting some wheels. And I had an idea of mine. According to the McCully boys, it wasn't a very good idea. Our wheels in particular that we've designed up are going to look much classier on this bike. So I've said, f that. You ain't getting those rims on that bike. When we went up the dragway, I knew we'd find exactly what we are after. Morning, Martin. Yeah, I'd heard about Matt and Danny McCully. I was keen to see their drawings. Uh, we're looking at getting some rims machined for this bike. Yes. Um, we're not 100% sold on the design yet. Uh, I had an idea of the, the wheels I was looking for. Shane is the key designer and machinist at Dragway. His knowledge and experience for what a bike builder wants will put these wheels on the right track. Yeah. They've just got to look racy. Yeah. yeah. See, they're, they're, they're too blingy for me, not racy. Yeah. And they're too narrow. They're sort of, I like the width sort of here. Yeah. It might be a little bit extreme. Sticking to Danny's sketches is going to be the challenge. But little did they know, Marnie had the exact wheel the boys were looking for. I thought the McCulley boys would like them. They suited Danny's sketch perfectly. It ended up the RF300s with a perfect match for the bike. Marnie and her team at Dragway are straight onto the design and build. With a couple of alterations to match the boys' sketches, the wheels are set in motion. With so much metal work on this bike being done by hand, these wheels give Matt and Danny a breather as technology takes over. With the wheels sorted, after the break, Kenny turns up for work for the bike teardown. Dundo's in the USA at Sturgis. Meanwhile, his bike is being customised by the McCulley brothers. And today, younger brother Kenny has turned up to give him a hand. I've met Matt, met Danny, but I haven't met Kenny yet. We're going to be pulling down that wide road today. Mm -hmm. um, so, can you do your favour and everything pulled off it, stuck in one spot? Without hesitation, Kenny's into the dismantling of Dundo's bike. He gets all the good jobs. Uh, look, I, I like to put my hand to anything, really. You know, my role there is basically to um, mediate in a sense, but then come up there and have a good shit stir, you know, keep everything fairly light-hearted. Oh, this one was all on side until I did it. There's, uh, there's got to be a balance, which none of them seem to have. Oh, you're going to stand around laughing. You come up here to help you. Anyone think you're not getting paid or something like that? Enough, help. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing now? So I'm, I'm sort of in the middle there. You've got yin, yang, I'm the om. And hey, if you're not going to work, you'd be lost without me, you know it. Yeah, I mean, they won't tell you, but there's many, many occasions where I happen to be calling it up there and they're scratching their heads and I'll just come up with the most simple type solution because they're that absorbed in what they're looking at. They they can't actually see it from another perspective. Yeah, we'll leave this one with me, you know, and then you go back and start the fabricate on the arse head. Of which bike? Of Steve's one. Then, oh, they'll bitch and carry on, put their little spin on it to alter, yeah, what I might have come up with, but hey, that's all right. I'm not seeking glory. Now until this one's out the door. With Matt and Danny so entrenched in this build, they sometimes need light-hearted relief. And Kenny is the ideal target. Every time. Every time. Don't up. give me about six doors up. Where am I going? The hardware. Yeah. Just change your gas bottle over. I don't really need more gas. I've got another three bottles here. I just need a rest for five minutes from Kenny. 
Get him me here. Yeah, watch, I guarantee at least five out of these next six cars will wave at me. Everyone around these areas knows me. See, there, there you go. See, this bloke? All right, mate. They all know me. This bloke in the truck, don't even know him, but I reckon he'll probably know me anyway. See, they love me. Managing to get a full bottle of gas before closing time, Kenny's job's done. Yes, mate. The object of me being there is to have them both wanting to punch my head in at the end of the day. And that's when I can walk away and say, yeah, my work here is done. I had to get a move on and get this front end rolling. Uh, I looked at a few different front ends and the one I come up with was one from Main Street products from the States. But the delivery time has put a spanner in the works. The front end's about two weeks off. So pretty much with everything done, the front end comes bolted on. The front end uh, took its time getting to us, so in that time I really put all my time into the tins on the rear of the bike, starting in on the rear guard. Another big feature on this bike will be the moulded tank. When I'd spoken to the guys on the phone, we, we discussed the potential of a theme style tank, which I had no idea really what theme they were going to go for. We're set on the tank now, we're going to have an aviation style uh, fuel filler cap. We're going to incorporate that look into the bars as well. Say so that area to that area? Yep. And then it'll just slowly just blend down to nothing. So we'll end up just with a fine peak off of nothing. So what these are just... Same more like ribs, just section of <clears throat> bar that you're going to be no, belting on, or they're going to be plates. They will be plated. Yeah. With the design of the tank etched in Danny's mind, things are well underway. When I saw the result, I was absolutely over the moon. It's exactly what was in the drawing. Big news on HDTV is that the Brighter Days Festival, held in bright Victoria, was a massive success. Where else on the planet would you want to be? A weekend all about bikes, cars and music, this festival definitely lived up to its name. While Dundo took over the town and became the honorary mayor, Paul took care of everything bikes and cars. Isn't that just glorious? Where's makeup when you need it? and we let Coxie loose amongst the punters. I feel like the Pied Piper. Fantastic. Hey, hey. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure, girls. Ah, they're only human, really, aren't they? The weekend was all about raising money for charity. Best way to do that is a raffle for a HDTV Mustang and some Harley Davidson bikes. A couple of magnificent motorbikes donated by Harley Davidson Australia and Northside Harley. And they went off to very happy winners. My yeah. chest. Feels like it's coming out of your chest. <laughs> this was one massive event, and you'll see it all soon on HDTV. Come here now! But after the break, we're back with Dundo's bike build and McCully Customs. So far with the customising of Dundo's bike, there's been some massive changes. And the original drawings are a fair task to stick to, but it's well on the move. And time for the rear guard. Uh, Steve has originally told us he wanted the, the, the arse end of the bike to look chunky. We'll get it to look fatter with the, with the guard, a shorter guard that he's told me he wants. While I was in Sturgis, I was looking at lots and lots of bikes and I'd seen some great back ends. However, uh, a lot of the guys, the back ends, you could see them trying to handle them and they're just too big. I've taken it from a 160 to a 200 and I wanted to keep that, so I made that pretty clear. That's what I wanted. This metal fabrication on this bike has to be perfect. Um, that's one of the things we're recognised as being one of the best fabricators around. So I had to let Danny have his way with this thing. So I want to blend a piece of material from this edge back into the guard. The rear guard must fit in snug and follow the flow of the bike, but no doubt these boys have the answers. I don't usually tell this to Danny because, yeah, he gets a little bit slack sometimes, but he's a fantastic fabricator. Sometimes I'll just leave him alone up there, I won't annoy him until he needs a hand, I'll go up and give him a hand. It's going to look odd here and here, 
So I reckon because of where it ends here, we take it out deeper here. Even though this bike is near the top as far as fabrication, it's got to be special. Every little piece on the fenders, the tanks, the bars, it's got to be perfect. If we do the LED section, there's going to be a risen section in here. I can make this section blend off somehow into that area and that'll stiffen this guard. Out of steel? Through. Out of steel. But we'll keep it, keep it very narrow here. Yeah. We only want to go up like 10 mil max. On the rear guard of the bike, uh, we started off with a rough shape and get it to a stage where we think, all right, that's what we're going with. From that sort of comes like an overlay. Um, we cut out other pieces of metal to overlay over the top to give it a different dimension. There's usually a hell of a lot of work in doing that, especially when you're doing it in one piece. You're not just attaching pieces of steel here and there and tacking them on. Try and get it all in one piece and mould the whole thing around. Seam weld basically every part of that guard and then clean all the welds out so it actually looks like one piece of metal. Another good friend of ours, Pete, he has his own fabricating business. Uh, if ever I need a hand uh, welding or a little bit of fabricating, I'll call him Pete and usually he comes straight up. You know, he's, he's a fantastic welder and probably about the only other person that we've found that we can trust. Well, that still think it's yours. I've known Matt and Danny for 20 years. I'm a TIG welder by trade and um, I know good work when I see it. They do all the, the fabricating and I just give them a hand welding things. And I worked on the, um, the tins, the, the guards, the fuel tank, give them a hand welding them up. Especially under the under Danny and Matt, it's got to be it's got to be spot on, or it gets rejected. So, you know, scrap metal and start again. So, you know, there's countless hours to getting those boys to to be happy with their final product. And we can't wait to see that.